This computer monitor is the 19-inch LG Flattron L1932TQ. This monitor has a problem. It does not power on at all. It is completely dead. Now this monitor was manufactured in 2006. Monitors from that era are notorious for having problems with bad electrolytic capacitors. And that's what's usually going to go wrong in these kinds of monitors. However, uh, in this case, it's going to turn out to be something different. Now, there are already some excellent videos on YouTube about how to disassemble and reassemble this monitor and how to deal with the bad capacitor problem. So, but I see no point in duplicating their work. So we're just going to go straight to the disassembled monitor and the power supply board. Here's the power supply from that monitor, part number AIP-0108. And it does have a swollen capacitor right there. This power supply has no output at all. There's zero voltage coming out of this power supply. This is your typical combination power supply inverter that we find so often. Here on the power supply side, we have a hot part, that is the AC portion, and then we have the so-called cold part, and they're separated by a big transformer. Now, this transformer is driven by a big transistor. But that transistor is controlled by a little pulse wave modulator chip right there. That transistor and that chip are also frequent parts to go bad. You can actually plug this board in it, to the AC power supply. It doesn't require the main board to operate. It's a self-starting, self-running board, so I've connected it to the AC. The pulse width modulator chip produces a square wave, which drives this transistor and then in turn drives the transformer. That square wave output com comes off of pin number six, which is right here. If we put our probe on there, we see absolutely nothing. This is the block diagram of that pulse width modulator chip, and there's pin number six, and that's where we should be seeing a square wave. I looked at all the other pins on this chip. They all appear to have appropriate uh, voltage levels, but there's just nothing coming out of this pin. So I'm assuming that it's our pulse width modulator that's gone bad. And here's what it looks like on our oscilloscope, just a flat line. Now our pulse width modulator chip, is a through and through solder with eight pins. We should be able to desolder that with a simple soldering iron. And we've got the replacement FAN7601 right here. Okay, the old chip came out easily enough. Now we'll put in the new one. I've put in the new pulse with modulator chip, and I also replaced that swollen capacitor. I am now getting voltage out of this power supply board. I'm getting a 5 volt and a 20 volt out of here, and I am getting a square wave going into our transformer. Okay, we've got the monitor all put back together again, plugged in and connected to a video source. We're going to go ahead and push the power button. And yes, it's working. Good. So... Here's one case where it wasn't the capacitors, it was something else. It was a pulse width modulator. Now with these monitors, capacitor failures are extremely common and probably if a monitor like this quits 80% of the time, it will be capacitor. But if it's not the capacitors, and you're getting no output from your power supply. Think about your pulse width modulator. Okay, that's it.